In this video, we're going to look at the main type of work we're going to be interested in uh, in this section, and that's pressure volume work. So we have some cylinder of gas here, and there's some movable piston here that's uh, keeping that gas to some constrained volume. And on top of this, there is some mass. There is some object with some mass M sitting on top of this cylinder of gas here. Now let's say that we had this cylinder moved into uh, fixed into place there and we let it go and the gas expands and then pushes up to this new height here. So it goes from this height down there to this height up here and it has pushed this mass up to whatever new height this mass now exists at. Or you could think this gas was here and then we put the mass on top of it and then it pushed down to this height. We, either way. Um, and then the difference in the height between these two uh, systems here is this delta H here. So this mass went from a height of either from here to here or from there to there. If it went from the top to the bottom that would be compression because we decreased the volume of the gas. If it went from the bottom to the top that would be expansion because we increased the volume of the gas. But what we're interested in is the work which is done during a process like this. Okay, so we're going to say that work we know is equal to force times the distance over which the force was applied, assuming they're both in the same direction there. But we're not going to get in. We're not going to worry about uh, vector calculus here. We're just going to say it's the force times the distance over which that force is applied. So for this, the dif uh, difference in force here. Well, this mass exerts some. Uh, gravitational pull. There's some gravitational pull on it and it's exerting a force downward on the gas. So that force is the minus mass of the gas times the gravitational constant g and the distance over which that force was applied if we had it up here and then it goes down here was this distance h or delta h. And we can rewrite this in the following way we can say it was that force over the cross-sectional area of this cylinder. So A would be the cross-sectional area. Okay, so it's applied over that cross-sectional area. So this is kind of like a pressure. It's a force over an area times, then we have that cross-sectional area times the height. So notice we just added in an A divided by A, so we just multiplied by 1 here. But this cross-sectional area times the difference in height of the cylinder, well that's the change in the volume of the system there. So this uh, force times distance can be reformulated as a pressure times volume. Remember from the uh, ideal gas section that uh, pressure volume is a type of energy, just as force times displacement is a type of energy. Okay, so that is equal to minus, well the pressure acting on it was magnitude of that, so there's some external pressure, and then AH is the change in volume. So we have a, we have backed our way into a formula here for what the work of the system is going to be um, when we have a gas in a cylinder like this. So before we go on, let's more formally define the system that we're looking at here. So the gas which we have in the cylinder, that is going to be defined as our system. So that means that everything else in the universe is the surroundings. So the mass, the air, <clears throat> you and me, everything else in the external environment outside that cylinder is going to be all in the surroundings. And what type of system is this going to be? Well, the cylinder is sealed so we can't exchange any particles, no gas particles getting inside or outside, but we do seem to be able to do some type of work on it here. We can affect what the temperature is on the gas and we can affect the heat inside of it, the work we do on it. So we can exchange energy with it but we cannot exchange particles. So by the nomenclature that we discussed in the previous system, 
uh, in the previous video, this would be a closed system. Okay, and then also to mention what I mentioned earlier, if we have a change in volume which is greater than zero, then the gas moves up, there's more volume for the gas, and that is an expansion of the gas. So if the gas expands, then it pushed, it had to push the atmosphere away, and it had to do some work on the atmosphere, give it some energy to core, to uh, give energy to the atmosphere to correspond for the fact that it is pushing it away. And in the reverse case, you would have to uh, you'd have to do work to push this gas back further down into the cylinder. So for an expansion, if our system expands, it is doing work on the surroundings. And when we do work on the surroundings, that means that the work is less than zero because work done on the system is defined as being a positive input of energy. Then if the change in volume is less than zero, if the volume goes down, if we start up here and finish down here, then that would be a compression of the gas. And in order to do that, then the external environment had to input energy to overcome the energy inside this gas and force that down into a smaller volume. So work was done on the system, so that would be work which is greater than zero. So we notice here that we had this formula that popped out for the work done on a gas during an expansion or a compression, or we could just say during a process. So what we have is if the external pressure is constant, then we have a formula for the work which is done on the system that work is just the minus external pressure times the change in volume times delta V minus P delta V and if uh, the external pressure is a function of the volume of the gas if it, if it changes as the gas volume changes then we make things slightly more complicated then we just need to do an integral instead the work we do is going to be the integral from the initial volume to the final volume, the external pressure as a function of volume integrated with respect to volume. So this is the generalization of the work done on a gas during a compression or expansion event and that's just generalized to if the pressure is changing during the course of that expansion. So we're going to look a lot more into uh, this type of pressure volume work, into the work of expansion and compression of gases, and see what types of processes uh, this can occur for, and also its relationship to the change in energy and the change in heat for the system.